You're listening to The Dental Guys, this special episode release, a time for preparation. Today on The Dental Guys, the president of the Tennessee Dental Association, Dr. Proper, joins us to talk about all the events leading up to the state of Tennessee's governor shutting down dentistry except for emergency procedures. We talk about her communication with the Board of Dentistry and what she learned about how government works in the midst of a crisis. We asked Dr. Proper, when should we expect to go back to work? And how are we different in the state of Tennessee compared to other states? We find out this and so much more today on The Dental Guys. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to restorativedrivenimplants.com to learn more today. Welcome to this episode of The Dental Guys, a very special episode. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy, and uh, we have really been looking forward to this. Uh, We have got Dr. Terrell Proper, who is the president of the Tennessee Dental Association, which is, uh, as you guys know, that's our home state. And uh, we are so proud to be together with you, Dr. Proper. Thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure. We have uh, been talk about a, a busy couple of weeks for us, but we really don't have any idea compared to what it's been like for you. I'm sure it's been a it's been a pretty intense time to say the least. Well, I have to say this is not what I expected toward the end of my presidential year, but you have to deal the hand you're dealt, and this is our hand. We're all in the same boat. We all have to face the realities of. COVID-19 and how they affect our businesses, our patients, the public, our staffs, and ourselves. And it has been a fast and furious week. Well, I just want to say I counted the number of emails that I've received from the Tennessee Dental Association. And I would say the communication has been second to none. They've kept us abreast of what's going on. I've got a new um, potential employee coming on board that uh, just became a member of the TDA. And he was, um, he was just saying that, man, they have just been really on it, you know, as far Mm -hmm. as, you know, communicating what they're doing, what's going on behind the scenes, getting out pertinent information. So I really appreciate what you guys have done at the Tennessee Dental Association. Well, thank you, uh, both Wes and John. It it has been a real demanding time uh, uh, with the TDA staff. We have a very small staff, our executive director, our component executive directors, the officers across the state, the board of trustees, the executive committee and budget and finance committee, which is the officers of the TDA. And we have tried to respond the best we can in real time as soon as we get important information to keep our members informed. I don't know if you've been on the TDA website lately, but Mm. we can talk about this a little later in our conversation. But let's talk first about the rapid fire we've been under this past week. Is that all right with you? Yeah, we'd love to know kind of how this has unfolded on your side and especially from the day that the ADA issued their recommendation to, uh, to postpone procedures. Well, sure. Okay, let me see if I can get this in chronological order so you can see how rapidly things progressed. On Monday, March 4th, Tennessee reported their first case of COVID-19. Today, we have 1,000 cases with three deaths. If you look at the map from the Tennessee Department of Health, almost every county in the state has been affected and has a diagnosis of at least one person. There are a few counties without any reported incidents yet. That was March 4th. On Monday, March 16th, we got the initial letter from the ADA to postpone elective procedures until April 6th, which was a three-week period of time. 
the Tennessee Dental Association had been waiting for that announcement from the ADA before we put out any kind of announcement because we didn't want to be in opposition to the ADA recommendations. So we waited for the ADA recommendation to come out. And that night, that was on Monday, March 16th, that night we held a conference call, an emergency conference call with the TDA Board of Trustees who approved and supported the statement by the ADA. But on Tuesday, we got so many calls from our members asking what constitutes an emergency and what's a non-emergency case and is this qualified as non-emergency. So there was a lot of confusion about what the definition of an emergency was. So on Tuesday, March 17th, the TDA came out with a memo that advised TDA members what was an approved emergency. By Wednesday, March 18th, the TDA had approved that emergency correspondence with our members, and it went out to our members on March 18th. The very next day, Thursday, March 19th, the ADA defined what constituted an emergency and what was non-essential treatment, which closely paralleled what the TDA recommendation was. Then on Saturday, March 21st, uh, State Representative Bob Ramsey reached out to the TDA to request some information regarding ADA and TDA recommendations and what other states were doing regarding uh, continuation of dental offices being open or closed. On Sunday, March 22nd, the governor's office reached out to the TDA for information, and we provided the TDA and ADA recommendations as well as information from other states. And then on Monday, March 23rd, the governor, uh, I'm sorry, on Monday, March 23rd, I sent out a letter from the president, and it was a very strong statement asking where the CDC, the Tennessee Board of Health, and the Board of Dentistry were during this declaration of an emergency state by the United States and by our own state. And then late Monday afternoon, March 23rd, the governor issued Executive Order 18, which temporarily prohibited non-emergency health care procedures for both dentists and physicians until April 13th. Uh, I think that several of our member dentists have asked why were dentists singled out, but we weren't singled out because the governor also requested physicians not to do elective procedures. And so the emergency order specified acute dental and oral needs can be seen, pain, swelling, trauma, and abscess with proper PPE. And so that's how we got to where we are today. So that's just shows you how quickly, day by day and hour by hour, uh, guidelines and information was coming from the ADA to the TDA mm. to uh, state government. And you reached out to the D Department of Health. And what was their response whenever you were asking um, for some recommendations and um, to what we were supposed to be doing? Well, I didn't get a response, and that's what encouraged the letter that I sent out. And I've since found out that the Board of Dentistry uh, was not really in a position to make a statement because they were bound by the Sunshine Act, which prohibits them to meet unless they have a 30-day notice to the public. And so that law forbid them to have an emergency meeting. So I apologize to Dr. Dan Meadows, who's president of the Board of Dentistry, and those members of his board, because I pushed pretty hard for a response. Uh, the Tennessee Department of Health did eventually come back to us, uh, and they made a public statement that said that they were leaving it up to the discretion of the individual practitioners. Uh, I did not find that helpful. However, the governor's office stepped in and helped make a determination to give our dentists of the state some guidance on what was acceptable and what was not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. So that makes some sense, I suppose, from a pure standpoint of not being able to meet. That's interesting. You know, that's the first we've kind of heard that. And while I guess that makes sense, uh, 
wow, make put you put you guys and and everybody in a difficult situation because you know in the time when you need this guidance, um, you know everybody's scrambling and uh, you know the Department of Health saying use your kind of use your best judgment. Uh, that was that was surprising to us. Well, that was their public statement. I have a feeling like just like the TDA and the ADA, they were probably overwhelmed with requests and uh, being asked questions. And I'm sure that the governor's office was overwhelmed, but they really uh, supported the ADA recommendation and TDA recommendation. And I've been asked by many members, you know, why they were asked to be closed to April 13th, even though the ADA and TDA recommended April 6th. And I believe that one of the reasons is they were looking at the information they had about when this pandemic would peak in our state. Mm. And they were trying to reach the other side of the peak. Mm. Uh, And also uh, they looked at the other states and they actually were very conservative with the members of our dental community in in, uh, in naming April 13th as the date, because if you look at other states, some are mm. dental offices are recommended to be closed through June 1st, uh, indefinitely, May 1st. Uh, it's all over the place. And a lot of that is dependent on where the epicenters of the COVID virus are. Mm-hmm. Do you think that this is like a crack in the system as far as them being able to meet on an emergency basis, speaking of the board? I believe that the governor did issue an order to lift the Sunshine Act to allow for emergency meetings. And there was a, an emergency meeting called of the Board of Dentistry yesterday that many of the members of the Board of Trustees from the TDA uh, were on that conference call. And there was quite a bit of discussion about the ability to meet during the time of an emergency. Mm. Uh, I learned a lot on that call. I really appreciate the board inviting us to be part of it. I really didn't realize, even as president of the Tennessee Dental Association, how much of the Board of Dentistry is governed by the Department of Health. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I was a little harsh with the Board of Dentistry. And uh, (laughs) I, I... just want to apologize publicly for that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's an interesting thing. You know, we I didn't I didn't necessarily expect you to say not not. I mean, obviously, if you you know you, you know that something has gone a different way, the right thing to do is say, "Hey, we're sorry that we misunderstood." But I this is interesting because I feel like this information is not really out there, and I'm glad we're getting it out there that there is uh, there's a lot of levels to this, and that trying to orchestrate this with who's governed by who and what, who can make statements and who can't. Um, it sounds like there's a lot more, uh, cogs that have to turn here than what certainly that I knew. I, the, the way it came across was that the state board didn't want to make a statement or that the department of health was, you know, feeling pressured not to make a statement, but it sounds like really it was, it was a lot of just kind of being held up by the way that things are governed. That's exactly right. It was more bureaucracy and uh, the way the statutes read, the Board of Dentistry wasn't actually able to make a statement by law. Uh, I think that the Department of Health was looking at their options and they were very careful. They wanted to put out a statement when they had all of the information. And, uh, you know, I, in retrospect, uh, I was frustrated because I felt like the Department of Health should come out and make a recommendation to all the healthcare professionals in our state. But I've learned a lot during this process. I think it makes me a better leader. And uh, I certainly am able to say that uh, perhaps I was a little aggressive in, in asking for a statement from both. Well, Well, I think think if there's ever a time to be aggressive in leadership, it's, it's now. And so I, I, for one think that that's what we need. Uh, You know, we had some, uh, uh, another uh, organization in Ohio made a similar type of uh, statement, Mm -hmm. similar in terms of calling out, um, you know, organizations to mandate closure because they were seeing that there were 
and then and then mandating or, or kind of calling out dentists who were trying to push the limits. Uh, looking at this as from a, a true public health emergency standpoint. So I, I think that there are certainly still people not taking this seriously enough. And I think if anything, as many people have said time and time again through this, you know, overreaction, uh, is is there really an over, could there be enough overreaction here? I think in the end, if there is, it's always, it'd be great. It'd be great to say we overreacted. But what you don't want to say is that we underreacted. Uh, that's not That's not what we want to be looking back at. Well, and if you look at the profession of dentistry, I mean, we are uh, pretty much face to face with our patients. And uh, while I said in my letter that high speed aerosol spray can be a vector to transmit disease, uh, there are also other ways to prevent the transmission of disease in the dental office, as we all know. And many of those uh, procedures have been outlined on the ADA website. Uh, such as having your patients rinse with hydrogen peroxide or use of a dental dam or, you know, there are many, many other ways to try to mitigate the spread of the disease. What about the CDC? I mean, you mentioned that you hadn't heard much of a response from the CDC um, and maybe direction. Tell me, tell me a little bit about has that improved or um, is it not, is it stagnant? Well, well, honestly, uh, the response from the CDC has been what you've heard on uh, the media outlets. That has been the response. We have not heard anything as a state dental organization from the CDC to this point. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. I do want to also point out that in the governor's order, uh, order uh, executive order number 18, he did make a plea for dentists and physicians and healthcare uh, personnel who are non-hospital based, if anyone had excessive or extra uh, personal protective equipment that they would consider donating it so that the first line of responders would have those hospitals and rescue squads. And in response to that request, um, there, a coalition has been formed called Smile Tennessee, and Smile Tennessee is a coalition of the TDA, uh, Hope Smiles, which is a mission work uh, uh, that does mission work on behalf of dentistry, the Nashville Dental Society, uh, the Interfaith Dental uh, Clinic, the Tennessee Veterinary Medicine Association, and the Tennessee Up. Optometric Association, and we are gaining other supporters. And if you go on the TDA website or your component website, if, if they've approved this, you'll see a place to click on Smile Tennessee, and there's a sh very short for form to fill out that takes about a minute, and you can fill out a form who you are, where you are, and what equipment you have to donate and how to do that. And that would be a tremendous response from the dentists across the state to support uh, the healthcare system. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing to have a kind of a clearing house for um, donation. I think that's going to be huge in our coming couple of weeks and, sure. uh, and, and having, because there were a ton of different organizations that were trying to organize this uh, and, and across the country. And it's great to have you know, TDA being one of the leaders behind uh, making that happen and joining with these sure. other organizations. That's big. Mm. That's That's great. Big. So there seems to be a lot of variation between states. And John and I've talked a little bit about that. And you may have, you kind of alluded to why that might be and what constitutes appropriate treatment. There just seems to be a varying idea. And with, media today, it's so global, right? I mean, everything is not state-based. It seems like because of media, it seems more global-based and that makes it hard. And so what's right in some areas of the country may not be what our state should be doing. Can you speak to maybe why there's so much variation between recommendations maybe? Well, I think a lot of the variation comes from population centers across the United States and, you know, where the epicenters are in each state. Some states have one 
major metropolitan area and then a lot of rural communities. If you look at the state of West Virginia, uh, they're reporting that there are no cases in that state. And it's most likely that maybe there's not enough testing in that state. But the ADA can make a recommendation. It's up to the states to support that recommendation and go a step farther. And each state is responsible for making their own uh, mandates and executive orders for their states. So that's why I think we see so many variations because of the, you know, different states have different epicenters and uh, some states are earlier, you know, the West Coast, California's closed down because the spread of the disease was was uh, duplicating itself, replicating itself so quickly. You know, Nashville's now become an epicenter for our state. But if you look across our state, Nashville, Brentwood, Knoxville, I mean, the major metropolitan areas have the highest uh, reports of uh, positive testing. But the rural areas, not so much. I mean, Blunt County, I think, has one case and if you look at that list, you, you can almost see why uh, the governor would issue uh, his executive order 18. Mm. Yep, makes but perfect he, sense. Yes, and he's been very conservative. The governor's office was very conservative with our state. I know that our members and our dentists in the state probably don't feel that way because they've had to shut down their offices and furlough their employees and there's a lot of discussion among offices. Do I, you know, continue to keep my employees on the payroll? Do I furlough them? Do I put them on temporary leave? So that's there's been a lot of discussion about that. And the ADA has provided some terrific uh, webinars uh, that you can get on demand if you go to the ADA website and get further information. Uh, I do want to put a plug in for the Tennessee Dental Association. We have on our website a portal for our members to ask questions to a, an employment and HR attorney who works for our TDA law firm. And you can ask a question in this portal, and within a day, we will respond to you with the attorney's answer. Now, we have to be advised that this is not to be this is not meant to be legal advice. You need to consult your own attorney, but at, at least is a legal opinion on which to base, a, you know, an educated decision about what to do in your own offices. Sure. Yeah. And that's a real huge resource to have because everybody's asking these questions about HR. We had somebody on the show yesterday who we, we talked to uh, Chris Mahan and he you know, was trying to, cause that is changing uh, at hour by hour, it seems like as well. And so it's great to have a resource that our members can go to and ask those questions. And, you know, with following up on what you mentioned, as far as the, you know, the governor being pretty conservative and trying to look at the peak in the state. Um, while we don't know, we, we know that we, no one at this point can know for sure when we'll be back to work exactly. Um, what are some of the things that you think are the trigger points for when we might be able to go back to work? I know we don't know the date necessarily at this point, but at least what are some things you think that the the state will be looking at or maybe the or the board or the health department of health uh, in order to determine when is the right time? Well, I think we have to follow the executive order at this point and consider that that date is the date we're going to go back to work. However, I think a lot of the decision is going to be based on the spread of the disease and how rapidly it's spread. It. It's spread. It. How rapidly it's spreading. Uh, I think that that is going to be a major determinant. I think the availability of protective, personal protective equipment is going to be a big determinant. Uh, I don't know anybody that can get N95 masks right now, and that's the only recommended mask to be used. Uh, and it doesn't 100% exclude the virus, but it's the best protection that's available. Our first responders don't all have them. Our hospitals are running short on them. And so I think those two things, uh, the regression of the spread of the disease and the availability for us to protect ourselves, our staffs, and our patients 
are going to be largely determinant. Well, I'm, I'm very much, uh, you know, there's so many unknowns and that's okay. Uh, I think that, that we've all had to come to the realization of kind of the new normal of not having the answers to everything and that that's all right. I think that we know some of the guidelines, uh, but you know, we, we have so many questions that, uh, hopefully we'll be looking back, uh, in that time frame and saying, wow, that was perfect timing. Uh, but if it's, it, you know, the situation on the ground, as they say, uh, is fluid. And I think the key thing is, uh, we want to come out of this being proud of the decisions that we made. And I'm just glad that we can go to the organization and have this, have, have that current information. Talk about, um, so some of the benefits you mentioned of being a part of the state and national organizations um, is having uh, resources. And you mentioned that there are webinars, things like that. You know, what other resources or what are some of the things you feel like dentists can be doing now um, to uh, be, you know, kind of ready to understand, first of all, understand where we are and then be ready for kind of where we go next? You know, what are you recommending that offices focus on at this point? Well, I think first and foremost, it's up to each one of us to get all the education we can. And the the resources are certainly there from the ADA and the TDA. The TDA has been pushing out emails that we feel are the most pertinent and applicable to our members on a daily basis. But there's so much more information on the TDA website and the ADA website. Um, you know, we're really concerned about our members and all dentists in the state of Tennessee being able to return to work. We're small businesses, and we understand that there's a lot of stress uh, because you're trying to maintain a staff and trying to maintain payroll and uh, doing your best to uh, provide the safest environment for patients to be seen. Um, so I think education would be the number one thing. Educate yourselves. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think that's key. That's good. I think and the other thing too, I think the other thing too is <clears throat> now is the time to consult with your attorneys, uh, with your accountants, uh, with your insurance agents to see what applies to your office and what is the best way for you to proceed. Now, I, I got a text message earlier that the legislation for the $2.2 trillion relief, uh, COVID relief, coronavirus relief has passed. And there are a number of provisions in that legislative act that will pertain to small businesses like dentistry. The ADA has been lobbying to include dentists in that small business uh, assistance program. And it's really important that uh that the dentists understand what's in that, what they're able to apply for, what kind of aid and assistance they can expect. And I think they need to be sure that their accountants are very aware of which of those statutes they will be able to access. Yeah, it seems like that's almost as important as education right now in terms of this progression of this disease. Once we you know, we need to understand that, but we right now, yeah, we need to have a business to come back to. And so, uh, having your advisors around you, relying on the guidance of our organizations, um, and the lobby that's been helping to set us up for success, uh, to, to actually benefit from these things. So I think that's a, that's a well said. And, and we've been, uh, as with our show, uh, that's kind of been what we've been hearing almost more of now, once everybody kind of realized how bad this was really going to be from a health standpoint, the very next question became, okay, well, we've resigned ourselves to the fact we're going to be out. What does this mean for my business? And I think everybody's afraid. Now, maybe one other question. I, I'd love to kind of know um, where you guys, how you guys are, 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 you know, finding that the response has been, you know, do you feel that, um, dentists are looking at this in Tennessee coming together over this issue. Do you, are you still feeling a lot of pushback um, against uh, shutting down or, or, you know, are people figuring out that this is 
a necessary thing? And is there a sense of unity that's developing? I do think as the dentists have accepted that this is a executive order, there's no choice. I think we have had a sense of coming together. You know, there we have had an overwhelming number of positive responses from members and non-members across the state expressing their appreciation for what the TDA and ADA and our lobbyists are doing. We've had a handful of people that aren't happy, uh, you know, that they have to close for three weeks. They were better, uh, you know, they were not as upset when it was two weeks, but we have to look at what's going on in the environment and what's going on and how it's changing and uh, the demand on our hospitals and healthcare facilities is almost at the tipping point. And I think it is unreasonable for medical professionals and people that are educated and realize that we have a pandemic and a virus that's doubling every few days. I just think it's critical that we understand that and that the dentists that are not able to open their office use the time to get ready for when their office opens so they'll be prepared both financially and, you know, business administration wise, and then clinically as well. Uh, So I think this is a time to prepare and hopefully we will be able to get back to work on April 13th. And uh, hopefully there are no more uh, blocks in the road, but as I said, it's changing so quickly and the information is coming at such a rapid rate. We just have to wait and see. As you said, there are no concrete answers. And I mean, I think some people want want to know what the answer is. And the answer is, we can't give an answer because we just don't know what how tomorrow will differ from today. Well, this has been really special. And um, first uh, time on our show, and we really appreciate you coming on. I think you said something in there that might be um, a show title, a time to prepare, right? And whatever mm-hmm. um, you're doing right now um, in your home uh, or in your in in your personal life, you're preparing uh, for whatever's next. And I think in our businesses, we need to be preparing and for for mm-hmm. you know uh, emergence from this, right? There's so many things that are changing each and every day, as you've heard Dr. Proper. Um, explain. And the TDA has really been on it. And I I commend uh, her, John, for stepping up and being bold to ask. Mm -hmm. And it's because of that bold uh, ask that you got a response, even though you might, you know, uh, you know, not have understood like we didn't understand. And but now we have an answer because of this and because of that you're a better leader. We're more informed now as dentists about mm-hmm. how things work. And I think because of this, things will change. I, I know things will change. And that's that preparation that we're going to make in the future so that this kind of thing maybe is minimized. Um, maybe if it ever happens again, hopefully it never happens again. So before we go, uh, doctor, do you have any uh, closing remarks you'd like to make? Well, I do. I want to thank Uh, Thank you for having me on your show. And I also want to say that uh, the dentists of Tennessee have really come together to support the recommendations of the ADA and TDA. Not all are happy with them, and I understand that. Uh, But the majority of our members across the state have supported what the TDA has recommended and are using our resources Uh, to educate themselves, to prepare for the future. And I think this experience across the United States, from Washington, D.C., to our state government, to our private offices, has given us some insight into how disruptive uh, something like a virus that replicates so quickly and is so communicable can change our daily lives. Uh, I think that there will be some changes in the law to allow for emergency meetings when necessary. And certainly everyone who's in practice will prepare to have uh, personal protective equipment, maybe some extra, maybe a little bit more than they typically have. Uh, And it's also taught the TDA uh, 
better understanding about our government agencies and how we can best serve our members. You know, it's easy to be a a backseat driver or, a, mm. or what do they call it? A next day quarterback? What is that? Uh, <laughs> Monday morning, morning quarterback. Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> Monday morning, right. A Monday morning quarterback. But it's really, it's really challenging to be in a position to lead our state and try to make the best decisions. But I do want our members to know that our board uh, is helping along the way with these decisions. And it's not a one person show. It's a team effort by the TDA staff, by our board of trustees, by our executive committee uh, to move us forward and do what's best for our dentists, our staffs, our families, and the citizens of Tennessee. Well, if you're listening to this and uh, you like what you've heard, because I like what I've heard, um, I think you should share it and and share the word about what's going on in the Tennessee Dental Association in the state of Tennessee. Um, if you know someone that uh, needs to hear a word about what's going on and they're maybe a little confused, uh, you you could share this across to um, maybe your Facebook page, your Twitter um, and uh, we'll be broadcasting more things like this over the coming weeks um, to keep you guys informed and abreast of what's going on, um, not only in our state, but across our country. Um, and so I really appreciate, again, um, Dr. Proper for coming on and, and sharing uh, some insight to what really happened in the last 10 days of uh, really in the last month, it sounds like, since the beginning of March. And so we appreciate her again for coming on the show. And so again, like, subscribe. If you've not given us a five-star review, that's how people get to know us on Apple iTunes or podcast, Apple podcast that is. And um, again, head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, check out the Dental Guys. And then, of course, if you're a member of the Tennessee Dental Association, you need to head over and like their Facebook page as well. They have an active uh, page there. I just checked it just a minute ago. And some of the most recent things that are coming out today as far as webinars and informational tips on what you can do to be prepared in your practice to emerge ready. Also, if you're not a member of the Tennessee Dental Association, this is the time to become a member. Um, I've been mm -hmm. a member of the American Dental Association since I was a student, the American Student Dental Association. And as soon as I moved to the state of Tennessee, I joined up and I'm a proud member and I'm even prouder now. Um, and I know that uh, this has been a great show. And again, I thank you. So for Dr. Proper, John, I'm Wes, and we are the Dental Guys.